Hello all, welcome to Sonobus. I am Dr. Mohit Shah and I am going to take you through the basics of fetal echo and touch upon few advanced features of fetal echo as well. So I am going to talk about the basics of fetal echo which I am following by the ISOOC guidelines and all my uh, images are basically from Alfred Abu Ahmed and Rabbi Choi's book. So it always boils down to uh, a correct protocol and methodology and therefore we need a sequential segmental analysis where we assess situs, identify arterial arrangements, AV valves, ventricular arrangements, uh, ventricular arterial connections, identify the arterial trunk arrangement at the three vessel view and the systemic and pulmonary venous connections. Now the, if I have to look at the abdominal situs, I would actually go down into the abdomen and uh, look at the arrangement of the IVC and the aorta. The aorta, if you draw a line in the midline, just falls to the left of the midline where the IVC is more anterior and it is to the right. So this section is of paramount importance to assess the situs. Of course, there are various ways where you could have otherwise assessed the situs. But I believe imagining yourself to be the baby helps you better assess the uh, situs abnormality than relying on the different formulas. So you got to actually check the checklist for situs where the stomach and the cardiac apex has to be the left, the aorta anterior and, uh, and the aorta is posterior and to the left of the spine, uh, the IVC is slightly anterior and to the right of both the aorta and the spine. So the relation of the aorta and, and the IVC is of paramount importance. The axis is slightly pointing to the left by 45 degrees. There could be a range of 20 degrees here and there to the right or the left. You calculate the size by eyeballing but actually measure it by calculating the cardiothoracic circumference or the ratio which has a mean value of 0.45 at 17 and 0.5 at term. So roughly the heart has to be the half the size of the thorax. You look at the four chamber view and you look at the atrial chambers. You have to have two atrial chambers approximately of equal size. The foramen level flap opens into the left atrium. The interatrial septum has to be seen and the pulmonary veins enter the left atrium. Similarly, the ventricular chambers in the fetal life have to be approximately equal in size. There has to be no ventricular wall hypertrophy. The moderatal band is seen at the right ventricular apex and the interventricular septum has to be intact slide from the apex down up to the crux of the heart. The right atrium is anteriorly located to the right of the left atrium. It receives the IVC and the SVC and also the coronary sinus. It contains a sinoatrial node and the AV nodes. This information is important in cases of isomerism. In the bicaval view, you can see the IVC and the SVC opening into the right atrium. The right ventricle is the anterior most chamber of the heart abutting the sternum. It has got a moderator band in the apical region. The tricuspid valve is more apically inserted on the septum than the mitral wall. And we will, as we will see later, that the chordate tendon is inserted up directly over the apex. The left atrium is the posterior most cardiac chamber just lying anterior to the aorta. It receives four pulmonary veins. However, when you see in the four chamber view, you see the inferior ones opening into the left uh, atrium. The left atrial appendage is actually narrower than the right one. You can actually look at the normal coronary sinus. It is situated behind the left AV groove. And it is seen as two parallel echogenic lines that open into the right atrium. So all you need to do is identify the mitral wall and try and take a section posterior to the mitral wall when you see a coronary sinus, which normally has to be between 1 and 3. If it is larger than 3, then it is dilated and then you have to look for a venous abnormality like a persistent SVC or pulmonary venous drainage abnormalities. The left ventricle unlike the right, appears apparently larger because it does not contain a moderator band. However, it is of equal size as that of right ventricle and it is more conical because of lack of again uh, the moderator band. 
The bicuspid valve is slightly placed higher or inserted over the septum than the tricuspid valve. And as we will see, the chordae tendinae of the bicuspid valve insert onto the lateral aspect of the left ventricle. <clears throat> so the differentiating point always remains that left ventricle is longer because the moderator band is absent there and the tricuspid valve is more apically placed than the mitral valve. You look at the AV junction valves and uh, the semilunar valves and you appreciate the uh, offsetting there. The tricuspid is more apically placed, inserted than the bicuspid and you should be able to see good movements, opening and closing of the valves that would actually denote the anatomy and the function of the ipsilateral chambers. So tricuspid valve in fact is more apically placed and the bicuspid is not, bicuspid is slightly higher inserted on the septum but more important feature is that chordae tendinae. This is appreciated on the lateral four chamber in the case of right ventricle go right up to the apex. Now this is a feature seen only in the right ventricle and becomes important when you have cases where you would have a morphological right ventricle on the right, left side uh, on the left side and a morphological left ventricle on the right side. This feature is extremely important that the chordae tendinae on the right has to insert on the apex of the heart whereas the chordae tendinae on the left side insert midway to the apex either anteriorly or on the lateral wall of the left ventricle. This is a feature that is best seen in the lateral four chamber. So always appreciate the offsetting and the opening and closing of the AV valves and this uh, and the semilunar of course have to continuously blink. If you see the valves opening and closing in real dynamic screen then you know that the valves are functioning normally. If you see them persistently throughout the cardiac cycle, then we are talking of atresia. It means that the valves are failing to open and that is an abnormal scenario. But normally you would see them opening and closing in with every cardiac cycle. <clears throat> the interventricular septum is best seen left in the lateral four chamber view. It consists of four parts. The inlet septum is at the level of AV valves. The muscular septum is the one that actually separates the chambers. The perimembranous septum is seen only in the five chamber view under the origin of the ascending aorta and the outlet septum is seen under the origin of the pulmonary artery. So uh, denoting terminology is extremely important when it comes to abnormalities of susceptible defects. Interatrial septum has two components septum primum and secundum and the foramen ovale lies in the septum uh, secundum. What is the most important feature here is the septum primum is embryologically related to foramen ovale. So whenever you have a doubt whether you are seeing the septum primum or is it present or is it absent, look at the foramen ovale flap. If it is seen then the septum primum has to be present because they are embryologically derived from the same entity. And the foramen ovale flap opens into the left atrium. The direction of flow is from the right to the left to the flap has to open there. Crux of the heart is the heart of the matter. It is where the interatrial septum joins the interventricular septum and the two AV valves insert. So you have to see the crux in each and every patient. The great arteries have to be seen in all and seen to arise and is to see the origin of the arteries, see the size, patency and flow, ventricular connections and position relative to the aorta. Now the PA divides into the left and the right branches. This is an important feature that differentiates it from the ascending aorta. So ideally the aorta curves to form an arch whereas the pulmonary artery, you know, um, after it comes out of the right ventricle, immediately divides into right and the left branches. This is how you identify the great arteries. And venous systems, of course, you have the uh, SVC and the IVC. So the key spanning planes include a four chamber view, the LVOT and the five chamber view, RVOT, three vessel, three vitage view, 
the arches view and the bicable view. So basically, <clears throat> a four chamber view can be seen in three planes, the apical, the basal, as well as the lateral four chamber. But all you need to know is that you have to have a checklist. And the checklist should start for the four cardiac chambers where you see the two atria and the two ventricles. The ventricles and the atria have to be equal in size. The There have to be two patent AV valves moving freely with a normal offset. There has to be a moderate band in the RV. The crux, uh, um, the IVS has to be intact right from the apex to the crux. And you should see the foramen oval flap opening into the left ventricle. And you would see the descending aorta in front and to the left of fetal spine and the pulmonary vein should drain into the left atrium. So once you've seen the four chamber view, we prefer the apical four chamber view for all our cardiac evaluations, except that the lateral four chamber gives you a better perspective of the interventricular septum. When you switch on color, if the, if the normal heart, if the, both AV valves are functioning well, you would see a parallel inflows and outflows uh, with, without any flow across the interventricular septum and that's the normal flow. Never forget to look at the area behind the heart. As I said, the left atrium is the most posterior chamber. Uh, it, uh, it, the most posterior wall of the left atrium has to be not more than 4 millimeters from the anterior wall of the aorta. This is a space that you need to watch for. You, you can have masses that actually invade this space and widen it, but more often than not, you would have abnormalities of pulmonary venous circulation that is going to increase this space and you got to watch for this space in every patient. The LVOT begins mostly in the center and you should see the semilunar valve uh, and the aorta goes forward without dividing till the arch and that's a differentiating feature. You have to look for the septo aortic continuity in the sense that interventricular septum is parallel to the anterior wall of the aorta they are in continuity there but if you lose the continuity there and if you, if you see that this forms normally an obtuse angle but if it almost becomes parallel to each other then you are looking for an aortic override <clears throat> where the aorta is overriding the interventricular septum and therefore this angle instead of obtuse becomes more and more 180 degrees or so the RVOT is shorter as it comes out to the pulmonary uh, uh, right ventricle. You will see that the pulmonary artery divides into the <coughs> right and the left branches and it continues as a <coughs> ductus arteriosus uh, uh, opening into the descending aorta. The aortic arch arises in the middle of the thorax. It's more circular in shape and the most important differentiating feature is it gives rise to cranial vessels from the arch. As opposed to it, the ductal arch begins more anteriorly because it comes from the anterior chamber that the right ventricle. <clears throat> it is more angular uh, as compared to the uh, aortic arch when it does not have any branches uh, in, in the chest. <clears throat> we have discussed the bicable view where you see the SVC and the IVC opening into the uh, right atrium. The three vessel view is one cephalad section above the four chamber where you will see the pulmonary artery, <coughs> the aorta and the SVC in line and from the left to the right in descending order of size. So what it means is the pulmonary artery will be slightly larger than the aorta which will be slightly larger than the SVC but all will be in one line. <coughs> If you go one section above, you will actually see that the aorta and the pulmonary artery join the descending aorta in the form of a V to the left of the spine. Everything that I say is here is important. The PA connects to the aorta by the ductus arteriosus and the part of the aorta beyond the origin of the subclavian is called the isthmus. So you have the three vessel and the three vessel trachea view when we switch on color both these vessels should be of equal size and should show anti-grade um, uh, flow direction. If there is a discrepancy in the flow direction, then we talk of a valvular abnormality of the heart. So if you measure, if you measure the PA to aorta ratio, normally the PA is just about larger than the aorta and the ratio is 1.16. 
So any discrepancy in the sizes of the PA or the aorta points to a four chamber abnormality or valvular abnormality of the heart. So you look at the vessels, size, alignment, arrangement, number of vessels, abnormal location of transverse aortic arch, as I said, both have to have an anti-grade flow. And if anyone has a turbulent flow, it all points to abnormalities or the four chamber that you can pick up on the uh, three vessel view. So normally, uh, you should see a crisscross which happens immediately after both great arteries originate from the ventricles. If you try and look at the crisscross more distally, more distally they come parallel to each other. So look at the crisscross just after they have originated from the ventricles. <clears throat> if you do not see them crossing, remember that <clears throat> to look for the parallel valves. If the valves are parallel to each other, that means you are dealing with parallel outflow. So the more stringent definition of outflows is when you see that the semilunar valves are parallel to each other, that denotes a parallel outflow. So when you look at the three vessel view, the structure anterior to the three vessels is the thymus. And this is an important uh, anatomical landmark that you know is buoyed. You have the thymic box on color where you see the intramammary arteries on either side of the thymus and this feature is important. Thymus is important because an absent thymus points towards 22q11 deletion. But of course the machines have more advanced now. You have sticks, you have multiple technologies where you just draw a line and the machine actually gives you all the information, all the sections that we just discussed at the click of a button. So I would advise patience and perseverance. Remember methodology is important. So sequential analysis and following guidelines will help you actually identify normality better to pick up abnormalities in a much accurate way. Document your uh, heart images in magnified sections and as I said, prove normality and that is what we are seeking here. Thank you so much.